So welcome back to Growth Trek Step 2. Step Dose. I see some familiar faces. And so actually I see some new faces too, so that's good. So before we get started, uh, let's go ahead and let's open up with prayer. Father, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to be here. We want to thank you that we are taking today and taking some time to discover the gifts that you have given us. And so we are very thankful, Lord, that you created us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, and you know our innermost parts. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for that. Help us discover what you've placed inside of each and every one of us and how we can allow you to work through us to impact the city that we live in. We love you. We thank you. And everybody said amen and amen. So, like I said, today is step two. Step two means we are going to talk about discovering your gifts. Discovering your gifts. What? There's gifts involved? Really? You bought me a gift? Really? This is not Oprah, all right? This is Growth Trek. Look under step your seat. <laughs> now, today, today we are going to be talking about and helping you discover some natural gifts and passions that God has placed inside of each and every one of you. Well, but Randy, I don't have a gift. Aww. I, I, I can't sing. Uh, I can't preach like Pastor Howe. I can't teach. I can barely carry a tune in a bucket, you know? But here's the thing. Maybe God didn't call you to do that. That's why you can't do that. But here's the thing, that God has called each and every one of us to do something because we are the body of Christ. And so just like a body that we have, we have many parts, but they all work together to function the way they should. And so, um, you know, honestly, there was, uh, in case you didn't notice, I have my beautiful wife beside me. Uh, and so she's helping with this lesson. And so I'm excited about that. I'm always excited to, to, to that's one of my gifts. That's a truth, treasure, a treasure. And so, so I'm glad that she's up here with me. It's always a blessing to do that. But, um, you know, growing up, I, I didn't really fit in with several circles, okay? So, like, I wasn't the most popular kid in the world, okay? Um, nor in my, in my school. Uh, <laughs> The world's kind of broad. I wasn't even that popular in my school. So, but the point was is that there were so many people that I would look at that had so many different special gifts that they had. Like, you know, they were good at sports or they could sing or they, they could do all these different things so well. And you just look at those people and go like, man, you get bummed because you think, well, I can't do that. And so I'm just not really, I'm not good at anything. And so as I, as I grew up, there was a lot of things that I enjoyed to do. So for one, I was a boy, so I loved to do, get dirty. I loved to ride my bike. I liked to ride four-wheelers and motorcycles and go out and get in the mud and be dirty. Uh, that really doesn't apply to ministry. Um, <laughs> I guess I could yes, ride. Yes, it did when we were youth pastors. It did. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And so um, for me personally, uh, I loved to create things. Loved Legos. Still love Legos. Um, but, you know, I loved to create things. And so... You, you look at all these other ones out there that you see people that have these special gifts or whatever like that, and you kinda, you're kind of like, man, I wish I had that. But here's what I want you to realize today is that you have something specific to you. Don't compare yourself because comparison kills contentment. And so when you compare yourself to someone else, you are shortchanging what God has placed inside of you. And so that's what I was doing in my life because I was comparing myself to all these other people when really God had put a creative gift in me that I've been able to utilize now for almost 10 years here at Summit, you know, whether it's through the media, whether it's through starting certain ministries, whether it's through growth trip, whatever it is, I've been able to do that. And I'm so thankful that in my journey, God has blessed me with a wonderful help meet and a treasure to do life together with that also, um, you know, helps me in, in, in my gifts or helps uh, encourage me in my gifts. And so um, since she's up here, we wanted to share, Pastor Hal and Lisa kind of shared just a real brief story, how they kind of got to this point. And so we're going to do the same. We're going to take about five minutes. You should be here about, I'd say, an hour, hour 15 max. So bear with me, okay? It'll be a little shorter than it was last week. So, but um, I was born in Logan County, West Virginia. Dad was a coal miner. Grandpa was a coal miner. <laughs> you know, I come from a family of coal miners, um, we moved in uh, 92 to Charleston because uh, my dad was in a coal mines that actually transferred. And so that took me to Charleston, which led me to Living Faith Church, which is in Marmette, West Virginia. 
And uh, while I was at Marmette, I, I met and ran into this beautiful woman uh, that uh, I just I had never seen like the likes of before. And uh, lo and behold, years later, she would become my wife. And so, out of that, um, out of that, uh, once uh, we let's see here, I graduated high school. I worked in retail management, um, and uh, you were working as a biologist. <laughs> <laughs> so, biologist. And so she, she she's a smart half of this relationship. Um, <laughs> and uh, and so um, we uh, we both had gone on mission trips out of Living Faith Church. They supported Pastor Hal and Lisa through Catch Fire Ministries, and so they would come and minister in our church, like they do here. You know, have done for years, and now they go periodically and reconnect with those people and speak and encourage them in a different way now. But it's one of those things like they they traveled to our church, we supported them, and then they came one uh, on 2001 and said we are going to uh, Peru. Uh, for a mission the trip. Amazon, not just <laughs> Peru, but the Amazon River. Yeah, like, I mean, when I thought of Peru, I, I literally thought of the Amazon. But when we got to Lima, I realized that there was a, a part of Peru that was actually like a modern city. Uh, but yeah, I, I envisioned rainforest. And, and that's what I got. And so, uh, <laughs> at least the first week. And so, but anyway, I felt like I was to go. She, Renee had felt like she was to go. That started this kind of friendship. Mm-hmm. And, and um out of that, a relationship was built with Pastor Hal and Lisa. And so there was a period in 2004 where we, we both felt at different times the call to be a part of Bible school. And, and so um, knowing Pastor Hal and Lisa, being a part of Victory, Victory Bible Institute, which is what it was at the time, which Jacob and Dylan are at Victory College now, but it was Victory Bible Institute when we were going. We both felt at separate times because God speak to us, and speaks to us differently, each and every one of us here. And I, I knew about two months before I needed to go, and you knew about... A year before, because I'm a planner, and I think God, you know, knows how we function, and I'm a planner, so I knew at least a year ahead that I was preparing to go the next year. <laughs> <laughs> and so we did. We both went. We both went at separate times, and while we were out there uh, just going to Bible school, she was able to go uh, full-time day school. I was able to go... Uh, part-time night school, and I worked full-time during the day. Uh, Pastor Hal and Lisa was so gracious to open up their homes. You've heard me joke about it in some of my sermons where I, um, you know, lifted up the windows so the ravens could come in and feed me because there was no food in the house. <laughs> that is, just so, just so I'm clear, I'm very grateful for the roof that they provided. And Lisa did cook. She did, she's a great cook. And so, but they did prefer to eat out and, um, and uh, they, it was never a part of the deal that, that they were going to provide groceries for me. That was my responsibility. And so anyway, <laughs> and so, but as we were out there, um, we were able to uh, get trained up at BBI. And so after that, 2007, we got married. Uh, and uh, we both worked full-time jobs, and we also volunteered at Victory. You know, Renee, she, you volunteered at Virtue for Teens, which is a teen discipleship um, uh, program, and then I helped in the men's uh, discipleship program, as well as the youth we helped out with, and several outreaches that we helped out with while we were there. And so um, we were we were content with where we were at. Uh, we loved our church. We loved what we were doing. We both had great jobs. We just bought our first house. We had a big dog, and I'm, I'm not kidding. He was big. What was interesting at this point in our life, we were at Victory. Victory was how big were they at the time? 10,000 people. So we were involved in the different areas of ministry there, but God had started stirring our hearts because there were so many people there volunteering and you almost felt like you were, you were serving the Lord, but we started to feel like we wanted to go somewhere where there wasn't a plethora of people doing everything you could do. We wanted to go be a part of a body that they didn't have a plethora of people and that we could really use our gifts in that way. And lo and behold, that's what you were getting ready to say. Yeah, lo and behold. Lo and behold, we started praying like, God, you know, what is it? There's so many churches, you know, I'm sure that there's a church that needs, you know, something somewhere. He had trained us up, so we wanted to be used. And so uh, we were praying, we were praying. And the next thing you know, Pastor Hal and Lisa are like, you know, we're going to go to Elkins, West Virginia. We're going to help out where Becky goes to church and has been going to church. And we're going to help them out for a couple months. And then they came back. 
uh, from that time and said, we want to take you guys out to dinner. And we were like, all right, you know. Beware. <laughs> <laughs> and so we sat down. We had this nice dinner. I forgot where we were at, but it was great. And uh, they said, chilies? And so all of a sudden, uh, that was my dropping bombs. And so they said, uh, we want you to pray about being our youth pastors in Elkins, West Virginia. And I said, never. I don't even know where Elkins is. I've lived in West Virginia all my life. I don't even know where Elkins is. I knew Becky was from there, but if you showed me West Virginia and asked me to point it out on a map, I could have not told you where Elkins was. Uh, I do apologize to all my West Virginia natives. Uh, and so... And so, yeah, so uh, long story short, uh, we felt God calling us, and that was a faith walk because, again, I told you, we both had great jobs. Uh, we were both plugged in, uh, but um, we really felt our heart was here, and uh, so we put our house on the market. Uh, we had no idea what we were going to do for jobs because we weren't expecting the church to pay us anything or anything like that, so we were just going because God called us, you know, where he guides, he provides, and so... Um, <laughs> So we had to make, had that conversation with our, our employers at the time. Um, and uh, We put our house on the market and said, okay, God, if you want us to go, you'll sell our house. Well, I think there was three other houses on our street for sale. We were the last one to go on the market, and this is right where the housing market crashed, like 2009, early 2009, it had just crashed. We put our house on the market, and in two weeks, we had an offer. Yeah. None of the rest of the houses were moving, but ours did. And so we were like, okay, God, got your message. <laughs> Guess we're leaving. And so at that point, we told our employers that we were leaving. And my boss said, well, do you have a job lined up? And I said, no, we sure don't. <laughs> well, what about your husband? No, we're just trusting God. Well, she's a believer too. So it wasn't totally out there for her. And she said, would you like to continue to work for our company from West Virginia? We'll fly you in you can do the field work, you work from home. Do you? And I was like, yes, please, yes, <laughs> yes, let's do that. So that's how mine worked out. And then a similar thing happened with your employer too. Yeah, I was working for a small uh, small company. It was a, a pool company, and we built high-end luxury custom swimming pools and spas, you know, kind of like the, the grottos and the waterfalls and all sorts of stuff. And, uh, you know, a small company, but I was doing the design and sales at the time, and, and, and Timothy, our, our my employer said, look, man, would you be willing to continue to design uh, remotely? And I said, yes, yes. Uh, and so, uh, so God opened up those doors for us to, to move here. And we, we lived with her parents, the in-laws, for 10 months and commuted back and forth from Charleston, uh, which was awesome. That was just a strengthener for our marriage and <laughs> taught us patience and the, the value of... of seclusion uh, anyway uh, I'm just I love my in-laws I really do I've, I've been blessed uh, and so um and so yeah and then God opened up the door for us to move up here and and so we were youth pastors for eight eight and a half years and so um doing that I worked uh full-time did that you know um part-time and then God opened up a door for Renee with, as she said she's a biologist uh the company that she can, works for right now uh, approached her with an opportunity for her to be full time, uh, so take on more hours. But she still works from home. She doesn't travel as much. Uh, um, she she doesn't travel much, but um, but she still is able to be home with us and and take care of Abigail. Where, you know, and I've kind of uh, stepped back about three almost four years ago to really focus here, uh, focus my efforts here. And so we just kind of we do what God has asked us to do, and we're just being obedient and faithful in that. And so. God's truly opened up the door and blessed us through her employer to, to keep us here. Uh, and so it's, it's, God works in, in some cool ways. And so would you add anything to that? No? She's a woman of many words. We talk enough for both of us, honey. All right, so let's get started in our lesson. We just wanted, again, to share you, share with you a little bit of our story and so you kind of know who we are because some of you are newer here, and so some of you know our story, some of you don't. And so uh, that way you can kind of understand where we're at. And so with that being said, we, we talked about gifts, and we talked about discovering our gifts, and um, I don't want you to take my word for it when I say that we each and every one of us have a gift because I want you to take God's word for it um, because... 
he's the all authority. And, and so right there on the top of page 17 uh, of your, your step two, you'll see Ephesians chapter four, verse 11 and 12. And so page 17, you'll see it says, discover your gifts. And then uh, you're going to see Ephesians. And so I want to read that real quick. It says, Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, uh, the body of Christ. Now, I want to focus on something real quick. It says, Gifts Christ gave to the church. These gifts, these giftings are for the church. They're what? The apostles, the prophets, and the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Now, their job and their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work. And that's what we're doing through Growth Track. We are equipping God's people to do the work that God has set out to do. And that's what we're talking about today. As a matter of fact, if you look at gift, it says gifts God, Christ gave the church. Gift is, uh, comes from the Greek word charisma. Charisma. Has anybody ever heard that word? That, that guy's got charisma. Or charismatic. You know, that's where we get the word charismatic, the root of that, um, that word. And so that actually, it, it doesn't mean that you need to jump up and start running around the church. Uh, it does not mean that. Because I know sometimes people are like, oh, they're a charismatic, a charismatic church. Oh, I'm not going there. Those people run around and swing off the rafters. That's not what we're talking about. When we're talking about charismatic, it, 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 it genuinely means a divine enablement. It's something that you were designed naturally to do, and we all have it. They look different, but we all have it. And so this passage here in Ephesians, it's, it's, it's not only the pastors, the, 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 the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, but there are about 27 other gifts that the Bible gives us in the New Testament um, that helps us understand some of the natural giftings that God has placed in motion for us to have as individuals. And so we're going to kind of dive into that. But before we do, Renee's got a few things that she wants to share. Yeah. So three things that are going to help us in uh, discovering our gifts is, number one, it's something that's going to come natural for you. It's something that just it's, comes easy for you. And you were going to share a story about that. Yeah, so I was talking to Bubby here, Bubby or Harold, uh, down here on the front row the other day, and he was just sharing with me like, he just loves to give, you know, whether it's his time, whether it's money that he has or whatever like that, he just loves to give. And that's just something that comes natural to him. You know, other people, they may not, we all need to be generous in our giving, but some people it just doesn't come natural. That doesn't like get them fired up. Like I got to give money, you know, but he was sharing with me that it does. And that's one of his, I believe, spiritual gifts that God has given to you, man. We're going to find out a little bit later. It's exciting. <laughs> So number one, it's going to come easy or natural to you. Number two, it's going to bless other people. And this isn't in your notes if you're looking for that. This, these, this is just side information, a little extra for you. <laughs> it's going to come natural. It's going to bless others. And number three, it will give you a sense of fulfillment. So when you do it, it's going to be something that kind of makes you happy that you did it. You, you get energized by doing that thing when you do it. Um, one thing I'd like to point out here, though, is I've taken these spiritual giftings assessments several times over the years, and my giftings have kind of changed. Some of the things stay the same, but it's interesting, depending on what season of life you're in or where you are, sometimes they can change in different seasons of your life. So don't feel like once you take these assessments that you are locked into this, especially the spiritual gifting one, because they're things that could could change a little bit over time. So don't don't freak out if that happens. So just like... In Ephesians 4.12, it says that we have the pastors and teachers and leaders. It's their responsibility to equip um, God's people to do the work. You have a job in that, too. It's not just the pastors. It's not just the teachers. It's all of us. God is working in all of us using our unique giftings and your unique style of your personality to reach those around us. It's not just up to one certain person or a, a certain group of people. All of us can use our gifts uh, to reach people for for the kingdom. So today you're going to be taking two different assessments. Number one is the personality assessment, and number two is the spiritual gifts assessment. Now, I say assessment because it's not a test. There is no <laughs> right or wrong answer. You can't Thank mess goodness. it up. <laughs> Randy doesn't like tests. I'm not a good test taker. But So it's just an assessment. And so as we do this, I want you to keep these three things in mind. And now we're on page 17 of your notebook. 
So the first thing we're going to look at is my gifts and passions. That's your fill in the blank. Your gifts and passions. You know, these are things that you just have eyes for it. You see it. It's something, again, that comes natural to you. It's something that you're naturally good at. It's not forced. It's something that excites you. Like, hey, real quick, Pastor Lisa, one of her gifts is to see detail. Like, you could literally walk into a room and no one could see the spot on the carpet, but she walks in and she's like, well, where did that come from? I mean, look at our carpet. You can barely see a spot. But, like, she sees it because that's a spiritual gift that God has given her for the eye of detail. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So number two is my life experience. So we believe that through your life experience, you've learned some things. And some of those things that you've learned can benefit the body of Christ. If you've never walked through anything, it's kind of, you can never really help anybody sometimes, you know. But if you walk through it, you can help other people. And that leads into number three. This is probably going to be shocking for some of us. But my pain is number three. He used our gifts and passions, our life experience, and our pain. So God can even use the bad parts of our life. And that kind of comes as shocking sometimes, but until you really think about it, God doesn't waste anything. Mm. There's nothing wasted when it comes to the Lord. And what the enemy meant for evil in your life, God can turn it around and use it for your good. Have any of you ever ex- ex- experienced that already in your life? That, man, you went through something and you were, oh, it just stunk when you were going through it, but you were able later on, yeah, to look back and say, well, I'm able to now encourage this person that's walking through this situation that I walked through, and let me, let me help you, give you some pointers on what helped me during that time. And so God will use that. Okay. And the Bible says, too, that we have overcome, or that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the what? Yeah, the word of our testimony. If we never share things with people, if we're quiet about, like, what we're walking through or whatever, We can't really encourage anybody, but if you're open and willing for God to use you and use your testimony, God can reach so many people. So don't be shy in sharing your testimony with people because there's people out there that that need to hear it. It's really good. It's really good, right? Come on now. I like that. So the best place for us to look for our gifts is in our design. And so the next section that you're going to see there is design reveals destiny. And so if you look right below design reveals destiny, Psalms 139, 13 to 14, it says this. It says that you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. And so we can find these things through our natural design. And here's the thing. I want, to, I want to point out something real quick. It says here, how well I know it. David knew how, how well and, and, and that, that he knew how God had designed him. But there are some people in here today that can't say how well I know it. And that's why we're here. So that we can walk away going, you know what? I may not fully get everything, God but I know that you have made me wonderfully complex and you have knitted me together. And so that's what we're trying to do. And in doing that, uh, in discovering that, I want to make sure that when we leave that you're able to say how well I know it. So let me give you three things that are going to help you get a little closer to being able to say how well I know it. The first one is going to be this, and you'll, this is the fill in your blanks, which is going to be discover my gifts. Through the assessments that we're going to take, um, you're going to be able to discover your gift. Now, next week is going to be really key because now that you've discovered it, we'll talk about that a little later, that you'll be able to understand how to use it. But the next thing, fill in the blank, so we got discover my gifts. The next thing is develop my gifts. And so, yeah, like I said, next week we're going to develop our gifts. Just because you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready to use it. Now, some of you are. But that doesn't mean that you're ready to use it in a way that glorifies God in that regard. And so we are going to give you some keys to leadership next week. So that's why you don't want to miss next week. And then Let's the- think about that for an example of that. Say you're really good, like Chad. He's a natural coach, right? It comes natural to he's him. A, he's a natural mayor, okay? Well, that's he's too. a natural coach, but he's a natural mayor. I, I'm telling you, one day I'm calling it. 
So this, just, I was thinking about this as you just said that, because like we think, well, if we have the gift, it's, it's ready to go, right? We're ready to use it for God. Well, maybe not necessarily. Sometimes we need to tweak some things. Mm. So like for Chad, he's a natural coach that kind of, it's easy to him. Maybe he has a passion for excellence. He has a passion to draw um, excellence out of other people and encourage the teammates, but maybe He does, I'm not saying that you did do this, but maybe he did it in a way that was really harsh and really hard on people. And like, yeah, maybe those, like, like those kids grew, but like they could have also felt beat down in the process. Like, oh gosh, gosh, I'm terrible. Like he yells at me all the time or whatever. Again, I'm not saying that you ever did that. But that's a good example of you could have a gifting that you're really good at and a a gifting that God's placed in you, but we need to surrender that to the Lord and ask him how he wants to use that and sometimes how we need to pull back sometimes in our own personalities to let God's light shine through that. That's good. That's good. Then the last thing here is to use my gifts. Jesus came to serve, not be uh, not be served. And he's our example. And the joy that we get from life really comes from using the giftings and the talents that God has placed in us to really impact others around us. You know, and so we're excited about what God is going to do through this step. And so at the bottom of that page, we're still on page 17, you'll see a quote down there. It says, my purpose is to serve God by serving others. I want you to underline that. Just my purpose is to serve God by serving others. Because here's the thing, this is, this is a bonus, this is a bonus for you, this is just, you know, God kind of revealing this. I, I believe we live in a day and age where a lot of people view church as something that they can get. I want to go to Sunday so I can get. But here's the thing, God never told us to go to church and get. God told us to go make disciples. You know, that's what he told He said to love God, love people and then to go and make disciples. That's what God has called us to do. So you discovering your gifts and your talents is so important because when you do that, your purpose is to serve God by serving others. You understand how you can do that in an effective way. It's not about what we can get, but it's about what we can give. Now, granted, there is, we need to be encouraged and all that good stuff as well. But anyway, uh, moving on. So this first assessment is going to be on page 18. Okay, so the, okay, you can't, that's your paper. That's on page, that's page <laughs> 18. So we're going to give you a few minutes right now to start that. But before you do, I want to tell you a couple things before you get started. So number one is be consistent. Why did we say be consistent? Be consistent with your, with, with how you're, you're answering. Does that make sense? That doesn't make sense. Does that make sense to anybody? When, you, when you're answering, be consistent. Oh, wait, it makes sense to all the guys. I'm seeing guys. Yeah, and all the girls are like, huh? Because <laughs> y'all need detail. <laughs> we just need the cliff notes. Can you clarify what you meant by that? When, when you're going through your answers, be consistent in what you're... So let's, let's give an example. I am assertive, demanding, uh, and, and decisive. And then you go to the next one. It says, I enjoy uh, multiple tasks at once. Um, and so I guess when you're answering... Um, Keep in mind how you function. Don't be like, well, I... Try to give your... Try to make it an overall, like yeah. how you are overall. Like, well, sometimes I do this. It depends on the situation. Girls, I know we're like, well, it yeah. depends. Are you talking about this or are yeah, you talking exactly. about that? Exactly. So, like, maybe we're just thinking, as a general rule, I normally handle this situation this way. So, that's what the male meant by saying that. <laughs> Okay, the second thing is be honest. Be honest with yourself because, again, there are no right or wrong answers. We're just assessing ourselves. And the third thing is be quick. And I say that to, like, the first thing that comes into your mind. Don't, girls, don't overthink it, okay? (laughs) Just do the first thing that comes into our mind. So we're going to go ahead and give you a few minutes right now. And when you're finished, I'll I'll explain how we're going to score these. So obviously, number one, it's on your sheet. I'm never that way. Number two, I'm rarely sometimes. So number five would be, yes, I always do that. So we're going to give you a few minutes and for you guys to go ahead and do that right now.
Does anybody need more time? Is anybody still working on it? So this is what your next sheet's going to look like. So for number one, your boxes for number one, put the letter D. That's your tallies for the letter D. Number two is the letter I. Number three is the letter S. And number three is the letter C. Four. Number four is the letter C. I'm sorry. C. Number four is the letter C. Sorry. Sorry. So this is a DISC, in case you wonder what it. This is a DISC personality assessment. So when, when you uh, now look at your numbers, you should have a first one that you scored really high in. So that will be your first letter. So up in the right-hand corner, your personality or your leadership style will be the first letter that you scored the highest in. And then your next letter is the, the next one you scored the highest in. Does that make sense? Then you, that, that happened to me. I am an IS or an SI, so they're equal. The other day I took it, and I had three the same. So I'm like, that's why I took it again. I'm like, I need to take this again and be real fast. Just so we're clear, there you can look at a disc test, and there are multiple different disc tests. This is a consolidated version to really kind of, again, give you an idea of where your strengths that's and the a, personality That's are. a really good point, yeah. yeah. You can get... Just put them both down. So it'll make more sense here in a second when we go through the next, the following pages of what that kind of looks like. It will describe what that personality looks like, and you'll be able to say, oh, yeah, that's definitely me. Yes. In the back. Same thing. You would write maybe, what's your number one? <laughs> He's either what? Right. Or he could be an ISC. And like I said, again, this is just an overview. So when we look at these, when we look at these next few pages, I think it'll probably make more sense as we read them for you to be like, oh yeah, that's definitely more my personality. Yeah, for sure. We're, so if you look from page 18 all the way over to 20, uh, 22, it goes into depth. Like, it really kind of spells out each one of the uh, personalities. Whereas if you go to page 23. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay. This might help you, too. This is not in your notebook. Can you guys see that really well? That's like a little chart. So the if you are a D or an I, if that's a dominant for you, you are more of an extrovert, typically. If you are a C or an S, you're more of an introvert. You're more shy. If you are DC, you're more, more task-oriented. If you are an IS, you're more people-oriented. That kind of gives you a broad overview of, of what those personalities kind of are. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? I don't know. It's just funny. <laughs> you're funny. And so I'm, if you want to... Um, you might want to write that down. You, might, you can draw that in your notebook if you want to. Yeah. Because that will help you, As a matter I of think, fact, mentally... Oh yeah, I'm more people, or I'm more task, or I'm more of an introvert, or introvert or extrovert. That'll help. You. I'll leave that up there. And so let's go ahead, and we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break here in a second. But what I want to do is go to uh, page 23. Now I encourage you go back again between pages 18 to 22. There's a breakdown of each one of these personality traits. But I want to go to page 23 and look at this just real briefly before we move into our break. Um, it says that uh, D. So a D-dominant personality is personalities who are dominant, direct, task-oriented, decisive, organized, outgoing, and outspoken. As you embrace these strengths, you, uh, you also make sure to listen attentively to others. These so, are things you can improve on. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, to also make sure, so to improve on listening to others because you're more task-oriented, so you want to actually take time for the person. 
uh, support other team members would be a team player sometimes because of that dominant personality sometimes kind of takes over uh, invest in personal relationships balance controlling and domineering tendencies value the opinions uh, feelings and desires of others who who in here your top dominant one was a d personality let me see your hands who was a d so that i can make notes so when you start oh, talking to me so when you start talking to me i won't be offended because i know you're a d no it's really good <laughs> When, He's not really paying attention to me. He's a D. <laughs> this is good as you, especially if you're on teams with other people, to know people's personality types so that I wouldn't get offended, you know what I mean, with Mark. Because, like, well, not again, we need to submit our, our personalities and things as under the Lord. But if we know a per, another person has these D tendencies, they're just direct and dominant and they're task oriented. So it's not that he's being rude. You're not trying to be rude. You're just task oriented. You know what I mean? So it's, it's helpful to know those kind of things. Your eye says personalities are influenced, uh, are, are I personalities are influential, witty, easygoing, outgoing, and people oriented. And so, but some of the things that you may need to work on is be aware of tasks that they need to be accomplished. Balance your emotions, words, and actions. Uh, remember to consider details and facts. Slow down your pace for others uh, when necessary. Listen attentively to others instead of only talking. <laughs> uh, choose thoughtful decision-making over impulsive decision-making. Who are our eyes in here? A lot of eyes. You're an eye. Oh, yeah, I'm an eye. I, right. I just want to note. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I, 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 I feel you, eyes. I feel you. And so let's go look at the S real quick. It says personalities are steady. S personalities are steady, stable, analytical, uh, introverted, and people-oriented. That, that doesn't make any sense to me. So like you're introverted, but you're people-oriented. I don't no, know. No, I think what it's saying, if you look at this, oh. <laughs> okay, well, never I'll, mind. I'll take that up with Good. There you go. Good. Yeah. So you're maybe not as an extrovert as an I per se, but you're you're not as introverted as a C maybe. Yeah. Or a D. That's good. Just means you don't really like big crowds maybe and things like that. Yeah. Gotcha. So some of the things you may need to, to, to look out for with this personality is uh, to take initiative, um, practice flexibility, approach confrontation constructively. Uh, be direct in your interactions when necessary. Realize change can be healthy and be willing to adapt. Consider the overall goals of your family or group, not just specific, um, um, not just specific processes or procedures. Who are our S's? I'm an S too. I'm an I and an S. They're equally. <laughs> okay. Oh, look how cute you two are. There are a couple and they're both S's. Aww. No. Hey, I could tell you a funny story, but we don't have enough time. <laughs> uh, and then the last one is a C. C personalities are compliant, um, competent, task-oriented, goal-oriented, and introverted. As you embrace these strengths, you may also want to consider this, some of the weaknesses maybe, is uh, be decisive when necessary. Uh, cultivate personal relationships. Be open to others' ideas and methods. I struggle with that. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, balance your focus between facts and people. Focus on doing the right things, not just doing things right. Ooh, focus on doing right things, not just doing things right. That's good. Help others accomplish their goals. All right, let me see you, C's. I feel like Christoph has raised his hand for everything. We got two right here too. Aww. <laughs> Christoph's like, oh, I'm a D-I-S-C. <laughs> I'm just D. C, okay. Are you really? I'm surprised. You can, it's okay. It'll make more sense, like you said, during the break, if you'll look through these, that because you should have had, like, I, two of mine tied. I'm literally tied. So I'm going to look at each of them and see, like, well, which one do I think I'm more like? You know what I mean? And kind of just go from there. So you want to have them do that? Yep. So let's go ahead. So we're going to take about five minutes uh, or less if we need to um, for uh, a potty break, uh, you know, get up, stretch a little bit, think about it, but read through again from pages 18 to 22. You'll see. Um, 
that may help you make Actually, more sense be, of what you feel like you it'll are. Be 19, 19 through 22, you'll kind of have an idea, a breakdown of what it actually, some of the more details of those. So, okay, let's take a break.
right. Once you make your way back to your seats, go ahead and flip over to, to um, page 26 is where you're going to go. Page 26. Um, So as we jump back into this, I hear there's a lot of buzz. Everybody's talking about what they are. I'm a D, I'm a I, I'm a S, I'm a C. I had one, I had one person, I won't name names. They're just over to my left and, and halfway up the middle section on the very end seat said that, what if I'm a JK? <laughs> Steve over here, jokester. I'm a JK. Steve. Anyway, so <laughs> as we get started, as we continue now, um, we are going into the spiritual giftings uh, assessment now. And so with your spiritual giftings, again, here's what I want to make very, very clear. The following assessment is meant and helped to bring light to some spiritual giftings that God has created in you. This assessment isn't the final authority, nor does it mean that you will never grow in other gifts as seasons change. God equips us to do his will and this assessment helps us identify where we can plug in and make the greatest impact. And so I don't want somebody to think that we're painting you into a box, okay? That's not what we're doing because I've taken this test multiple times. And, and you know, every probably five years, somewhere around in there, we've taken it at some point, And they change depending on your seasons, depending on your life experiences a lot of times. Sometimes you will grow in a, uh, a, sp a spiritual gifting that you um, were kind of low in before. You know, and so, um, but this, again, helps us understand kind of where we're strong right now so that we can make the greatest impact. All right, so here's what we're going to do. This one's going to be a little different. You had to take the test by yourself this past time. And so what you're going to go is if you're on page 28, you're going to see this guy uh, up on the screen behind me. Um, and um, you'll see it back there. And um, uh -huh. You will. Uh -huh. I have confidence in it. Here it comes. Oh, there it is. Nope. Yep. And then uh, you're going to see this right here. It's really washed out. It's mm -hmm. okay. But anyway, so if you're on page 28, you'll see it. 26. Yes. So you guys go ahead and turn to page 26 in your manual. And I am going to read these questions. It will save time from flipping back and forth of going through these, okay? And so here's what you're going to do. You'll notice on page 26, you're going to see all your numbers. And then you're going to see at the top. You're going to see number one, almost never. Number two, sometimes. Number three, almost always. And so as Renee reads these, again, be honest, be quick, but jot that down in the corresponding number as you go. You know, when she reads number one, you're like, oh, almost never. You, you put a one down beside one and then so on and so forth. Does everybody understand that? So you turn to page 26. There's, you do not need to have the questions there. I will read you the question. So you turn to page 26 and just listen, okay? So under this space on number one, this is question number one. Hang on a second. Do you have a question? Okay. Yep. Number one. Aww. I'm just kidding. Ron. I'm just, I love you. I love you. Ron gets so much. Okay, flack. turn to page 26. Turn to page 26 in your folder. So you're just going to listen to me. I'm going to ask the question and you will answer. Number one, I like to organize services and events. So on number one, you would put one for you never like to do that. Two, sometimes you like to organize events. Three, you always like to organize events. So one, if you never do that. Two, if you sometimes do. Three, if you always like to do that. Number two, I am interested in starting a new church. One, you don't want to do that. Number two, yeah, you might want to someday or Give yourself a three if you have always dreamed of doing that. Number three, I enjoy working with my hands. I enjoy working with my hands. That's about the only thing I enjoy working with because they don't have opinions. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> so Randy would have marked himself a three for that <laughs> answer. Number four. I can tell when someone is insincere. 
I can tell when someone is insincere. Number five, I pray daily for people who do not know Jesus. Be honest. That's another thing here. There is no right or wrong. Just be honest with who you are. If you don't do that, Mark, give yourself a one. You don't do that. You are not a bad person. It's okay. Number six, encourage, encouraging others is a high priority for me. I like to encourage, pretty much I like to encourage people. It's really important to me to encourage people. Number seven, I trust God to provide for my daily needs. Number eight, I am passionate about financially investing in the kingdom of God. I am passionate about financially investing in the kingdom of God. Number nine, I look for opportunities to pray for the sick. Number 10, I enjoy doing little things that others typically do not enjoy. I like doing little things that others typically do not enjoy. Number 11, I often have people over to my house. Number 12, I enjoy spending hours in prayer for others. Number 13, education is very important to me. Number 14, I tend to motivate others to get involved. Number 15, I hurt when I see others hurting. Number 16, I believe God will use me to enact his miracles. Number 17, I enjoy sharing the gospel with other groups and nationalities. I enjoy sharing the gospel with other people groups and nationalities. Number 18, I've devoted considerable time to mastering my voice and or musical instruments. I've devoted considerable time to master my voice and or musical instruments. That is a solid one for me. <laughs> Number 19, caring for the hurting is one of my highest priorities. Number 20, I get frustrated when people knowingly sin. Number 21, I enjoy serving behind the scenes. Number 22, I like creating outlines of the Bible. Number 23, God has used me to interpret what someone is speaking in tongues is saying. God has used me to interpret what someone speaking in tongues is saying. Number 24, I enjoy the book of Proverbs more than any other book in the Bible. Number 25, I am passionate about managing details. 26, I like to help start new ministry projects. Number 27, I consider myself a craftsman or a craftswoman. Number 
number 28. I sense when situations are spiritually unhealthy. Number 29. I am greatly motivated by seeing people who don't know God be saved. Number 30. I come across as loving and caring. Number 31. Asking God for a list of unseeming of, I'm sorry, I want to start again. 31. Asking God for a list of seemingly impossible things is exciting for me. Asking God for a list of seemingly impossible things is exciting to me. Number 32, I find ways to give offerings above my tithe. Number 33, I believe miraculous healing is possible and still happens today. Number 34, helping others is one of my greatest motivations. Thirty-five, creating a warm and welcoming environment is important to me. Thirty-six, I am burdened to pray for situations affecting the world. Thirty-seven, people come to me to learn more about God in the Bible. Thirty-eight, I prefer to take the lead whenever possible. Thirty-nine, I am very sensitive to sad stories. Number 40, miracles often happen when I am nearby. Forty-one. The idea of living in another country to benefit the gospel is exciting to me. 42. I desire to serve the church through worship. 43. I enjoy connecting, caring for, and coaching others. I enjoy connecting, caring for, and coaching others. 44. Confronting someone about sin in their life is important to me. 45. It bothers me when people sit around and do nothing. Preach. Sorry. That one would have been number three for me. It bothers me when people sit around and do nothing. 46. I share biblical truth with others to help them grow. 47. I pray in tongues daily. 48. When I study scripture, I receive unique insights from God. 49, creating a task list is easy and enjoyable for me. 50, I am attracted to ministries that start new churches. 51, building something with my hands is very satisfying to me. 52, I can pinpoint issues or problems quickly. 53, sharing the gospel with someone I do not know is exciting and natural for me. 54, I look for ways to encourage other people. 
55. I trust that God has my back in every situation. Fifty six. I want to make more money so that I can give more. Fifty seven. God has used me to bring healing to those who are sick. Fifty eight. Being a part of the process is fulfilling to me. Being a part of the process is fulfilling to me. Fifty-nine, I tend to make total strangers feel at home. Sixty, people often ask me to pray for them. Sixty-one, I enjoy knowing biblical details and helping others understand them too. Sixty-two, I delegate responsibilities to accomplish tasks. 63. I am motivated to help people in need. 64. I have a constant hunger to see God's miraculous power. 65. I focus a lot on reaching the world for Christ. 66. I gain my deepest satisfaction through leading others in vocals or instrumental worship. 67. I enjoy helping people who are going through a difficult time. 68. I enjoy hearing passionate and clear preaching of God's word. 69. I like to do small things that others overlook. 70. I prefer to teach and study the Bible topically rather than verse by verse. I prefer to teach and study the Bible topically rather than by verse by verse. 71. Praying in tongues is encouraging and important to me. 72. When faced with difficulty, I tend to make wise decisions. 72. Okay. So now you're going to take... You can't really see that. Yeah. So from left to right, so the top one, 1, 25, 49, that's going to be your total for A. Okay? Does that make sense? So total, total out your um, columns there. So from left to right. And then we'll give you the gift that associates with that total here in a second.
Is everybody, everybody tallied up and finishing up? Okay, if, you, if you're not, no, no big deal. You can, you can do it after we're done here. <laughs> but we're getting ready to close up. we just got a few more minutes before we uh, end this uh, step. But what I want you to do is, so if you will look at, it says gift. So that gift column off to the far right-hand side of page 26 Go down, and you can do it one of two ways. Uh, what we do is we circle, uh, so like the high ones. So for me, uh, let's see here, B is a high one, and so I would circle it. So it was a nine, so I would circle that. And then C was also high for me, and so I circled that. That way, here in a second, I'm going to show you where to get what uh, spiritual gift corresponds with those letters. And so if you want to circle like your first, your top three, We'll start there, and then after you leave, you can go back through and look at more that you're strong in. But so go ahead and circle those top top three, the, the ones that are you scored the highest on. And then what you'll notice is on pages 27, 28, 29, and 30, there is a list of spiritual giftings. And so starting with A, it's administration, then B is apostleship, C is craftsmanship, and so on and so forth. So what you would do is you would look at your list and see the highest ones that you did. So if you got B over here, I would go over here and see, oh, that's apostleship. And then I would write that in that column on the far right-hand side of your paper, and I would write that in, apostleship. For me too, it looks like C is a very high one for me, which is craftsmanship. So I would write that in in the corresponding uh, line. Does that make sense? Does everybody follow that? Okay. And so do your do your top three or four. Or four. If, whatever you scored a nine in, if you scored a nine in, what, cause that's the highest you can get, go ahead and write in all those. Okay, so with the last few minutes that we have here, I want you to understand this. From this point forward, your next steps, which is on page 31, it says this. It says at the top, number one, it says pray and ask God to strengthen your gifts. We want you guys to pray about these because now some of you, this may be completely new information. Great. Begin to pray and ask God, Lord, show me how to utilize these in a way that glorifies you. Um, maybe you knew these things, but you have time to mature in that and grow in that and find out how um, that applies to this season of your life. The second thing it says here on the next step is to pray about joining an impact team. And the reason we ask you to pray about joining an impact team, again, it, this is a team effort. What God has called us here to do in Elkins, West Virginia, takes a team. And so once you have found kind of those strengths of your personality and your spiritual giftings, um, you're able to look at uh, our impact teams. And we have a comprehensive list of those impact teams in page nine of your appendix. And so you should already have the appendix. And so if you went to page nine, you would see the start of the list of impact teams that we have. Um, so read through those and pray about joining one of those. And as a matter of fact, if you want to, your page 27, 28, 29, 30, and 30, you will notice those spiritual giftings, it has this little little blurb about it and then it has scriptural reference to back that up. But also in parentheses, you'll find that it has impact teams that these would correspond with. And so for instance, uh, say you are uh, strong in um, administration. You see down in the parentheses below that, it says guest services, impact team leader, an M be an impact team leader, uh, kids check-in, hospitality slash events, things like that. So help planning, helping planning events, things like that. That would be something that you would consider, you know, being a part of. And like G, you would look at faith if you were strongest in that one. At the bottom, it says all teams. So that means pretty much 
every area of ministry in the church needs someone with that strength. Some faith-filled believers that are ready to pray down heaven. Yeah, if it says all teams, that's what it means, is every, everything. Yeah. So with that being said, um, that is all we have for today. That, that concludes our step two. Now, if you have questions, we will be here to answer those. So pl- please feel free to come down, talk with us. We would love to answer those questions for you. The last thing there on next steps is to complete the last step of growth trek, which is step three, and that's gonna be learning to lead. So we're gonna be taking what we know now about ourselves and learning how to lead in a godly manner. Because um, again, now that we know these gifts, it doesn't necessarily always mean that we're ready to use those gifts. So, all right. So if uh, you have any questions, we'll be down here. Uh, thank you guys so much for your patience and your time and being such great students. Uh, we will see you on Wednesday night. Uh, we have service here on Wednesday night, and then we'll see you back on Sunday morning for service and for the last and final step three of Growth Trek next Sunday.